Okay, this is Web Development Strategy Course Lesson Number 8, One Bite at a Time. Winston Churchill says, however beautiful the strategy, you should occasionally look at the results, right? So yesterday we talked about analyzing, 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 and so that's what's going to help us get, uh, you know, build a better strategy, because once we learn on, you know, what we're doing, uh, we we can capitalize on that. What like we showed you how to you know utilize the uh, the key words that you're getting indexed on page one for, and then go back into those pages and optimize them. Okay. Okay. So as a review, uh, we could do the the true or false thing once again here. This is the final lecture uh, of the the eight week class, eight lesson class. So let's test our knowledge to see how we can do. True or false, a permalink is a temporary link to a web page. True or false? Very good. False. It's a permanent link to a web page, hence the, na the abbreviation permalink. Okay, true or false, a keyword phrase is an anchor text that is linked back to your web page. A keyword phrase is an anchor text that is linked back to your web page. Yeah, that's right. That's true. Okay, true or false? I can use the Google Keyword Planner to see who is linking to my site and what keyword phrase they are using. So I can use the Google Keyword. Yes, true. Very good. Okay, so the subjects we're going to cover today are is using Bing Webmaster Tools, how to get indexed in Bing, understanding Bing analytics, getting more help and creating new strategies, and then we're going to wrap up with the conclusion. Okay, so using Bing Webmaster Tools. In lesson three, we set up Bing Webmaster Tools. In this lesson, we will drive further into the metrics that Bing has to offer. You shut that door, please. <clears throat> okay, so. When we first log into our Bing Webmaster Tools, we're going to see a menu on the left. Now, it's a lot simpler than Google, the Google Keyword Planner, okay? Because this is your menu right here. So you'll have My Site. So if you have more than one site, you can have more than one site in Bing Webmaster Tools. Uh, sometimes you'll have a client that you know that that wants you to take care of you know what they're what gets optimized and what doesn't you know analyzing the data and stuff so you could do that you know how to add a website to Bing Webmaster Tools like we did in lesson three and then right here is going to be the dashboard so whatever website that you're on you know that's you know this is just going to be kind of like an overview of what Bing has to say about that website in relation to their search engine. Right here is a parent menu, configure my site, and there are several things underneath of that menu, within that menu. Uh, reports and data is another uh, parent menu with things in it, as well as diagnostics and tools. Uh, this is this particular menu item is where we'll submit our different web pages to Bing. Um, and then right here is going to have some messages and so on and so forth let, that Bing will have for us whenever we're talking, uh, whenever they want to communicate to us about our website. This is Webmaster API. A lot of times people will make apps and stuff that have to do with the Bing Webmaster tools. And so, uh, lot, you know, there's different apps out there that you can download and uh, you'll need that Webmaster API key to uh, put into the app. So it can communicate with Bing. Okay, so when we uh, go into go, uh, Bing Webmaster Tools, we'll see uh, here's the dashboard, right? So, and here's the site that we're analyzing. And if we wanted to change a site, we could just, <coughs> excuse me, if we wanted to change a site, we just click that drop down menu and select the different site that we have on there, right? I mean, that's, that's how easy it'd be to you know, look at the sites at a glance, okay? Over here, we can change the dates. Maybe one want to see for the last 30 days, the last week, you know, yesterday, so on and so forth. So here's where you can change the dates and look at the data, all right? You can also enter a custom date in there. Uh, here in this first uh, table, uh, column, we'll see the clicks from the search. And what this is showing you is the percentage of change from 
this period to the prior period. And so we see that we're comparing months. So from this month to the last month. All right. Now if you change that time, of course that the this would this data would update. Here it's going to let you know how many times you appeared in the search this website. Okay? So in the, in the Bing search engine uh, here we can see how many pages are crawled and what the difference is from last month to this month. You can see we went down 17% in the pages crawled. Okay, And here we can see our crawl errors. Uh, our crawl errors are down 42%, which is actually good. So uh, if we had any crawl errors, then uh, we would like this number to go down, not up. So uh, that's one of the good reds. Uh, here's the pages index. We can see we've had an increase of 3% more pages that were indexed. That's why it's always important to continue to add posts and pages to your website and submit them to Bing because then that way they'll index them for you and you'll you have more of a uh, more of exposure on the internet. If we scroll down a little bit, we can see the next section here on the dashboard is your sitemaps. And so we see here when the you know these different sitemaps you can see this one is capsuleusa.com slash sitemap.xml and that it was successfully submitted and last crawled on February 23rd 2014 okay this next section here are our search keywords okay so we see here they give us our keyword how many clicks we got and how many times it appeared in the search but notice it doesn't tell us what page it is on. So it'd be kind of nice if we could see what page we appeared on, what where our rank was, right? But uh, it doesn't give us this information. Here's the inbound links to our website. So here's the different links that are pointing to our website. Okay, uh, different sections. We can see we have uh, now this could be pages within our website and pages on other websites. These are called inbound links. Don't get this confused with internal links. These are inbound links, okay? So this is, can come from within your website itself or another website. All right, now here's the different diagnostics and tools, you know, you can fetch as Bing bot, uh, the markup validator, SEO analyzer, and so on and so forth. And you just enter a URL and click submit. But this is just the overview, okay? If we go to the next section here under configure my site and hit sitemaps, this is where we will submit our sitemaps to Bing. Basically, we would just type in a uh, the URL to our sitemap and click submit. And you can see that, you know, it was submitted uh, there a while ago. So, and then they'll crawl it every so often. Uh, here's the URLs. Now, this is what we learned in lesson three. Uh, how to submit URLs. Uh, we uh, click on there and then just type in it or paste in the URL, hit submit, and that'll let, let Bing know, hey, I've created a new page on my website. I want you to index it according to your algorithm. And so that's how you do that. And you can see down here was, was a couple of URLs that were indexed. Okay, so <coughs> Just like we talked about with, uh, you know, uh, Google Webmaster Tools, you really don't want to um, mess with this tool unless you're sure what you're doing because you could have things, you know, URLs ignored that should not be ignored, okay? So you can see that these are different uh, um, extensions that are within Capsule USA, and they're asking, do you want us to ignore these? links with this in it? No, we don't want them to ignore it. We want them to index it. The only ones that we want them to ignore is stuff like with admin, dashboard, you know, stuff like stuff like that. But this is done in the robot text, so we don't want to worry about that. Our next section here is crawl control. Now, <clears throat> notice here it says, when do you receive the most traffic to your site for your local time of day? And I entered 5 p.m. To 11 p.m. So you notice that we're put, we put the crawl rate faster earlier in the day because here, this is for Bingbot. Here, since we get most of our traffic this time of day, 
we want Bing Bot to come at a time when, you know, there's not a lot of traffic on our site. Okay, that'll help us uh, avoid, you know, crawl errors and 404 errors from uh, the big webmaster tools. So we want them to come to the time of day when there's not a lot of people on our website on average. Okay. Now the next section we're going to be talking about are deep links. Okay. <laughs> Now, why would people want to block deep links? Okay, an example, one of the examples that I could come up with is the Wall Street Journal has deep links. Uh, basically, it would be like Kim's site, learnwebstrategy.com slash promotion slash my special web page slash index.php. Now, notice that that is quite an extensive or longer URL. And so, Let's say that I have an, uh, you know, something on that URL that I'm letting other people use to advertise, okay? And that uh, maybe I have a video on there, you know, that that's just for me, my website, okay? But somebody comes on there and they find that video, that special video that I'm trying to hide from everybody because you now I want people to pay for the video, uh, then. This is a deep link that I would want hidden from the search results. So Bing gives us the option to block a deep link. Maybe I'm an artist and I have an MP3, a song, and it's located in you know my mymusicsite.com slash uh, song slash uh, rock and roll slash heavy metal. Uh, blow the fuse dot mp3 so that's a deep link right there that I just don't want Bing to index because you know that's that's a song that I have for sale on my website alright so those are deep links that possibly you might want to block okay so that's that's how you do it but within the WordPress CMS they're blocked with robot text so we really don't have to worry about that much okay so we have we would enter the URL to the deep link uh, for the search result you know this would be the search result URL and then we could select the countries you know that we want them blocked in and click block okay all right so you can use this tool to block deep links for up to 90 days uh, in Bing that's that's the extent of it as far as the period goes and then you're gonna have to look for another option to block those deep links like a robot text but fortunately like I said in content management systems we already have the ability to block Bing bot Google bot all those different bots come and spidering our web page with the robot text <coughs> now let's say we want to block URLs you know the dashboard the admin so on and so forth uh, you know this is another way that people could do it but once again we have our robot text that's doing the work for us uh, in a content management system so so you would use this tool to block an admin directory or possibly a private directory that you didn't want Bing to index okay it's a lot like deep linking okay so here's page previews under configure my site so let's say that we wanted to preview a page and we click fetch and so it'll bring up something like this okay and maybe we we'll want to block this page we can block it right here and then the reason the image contains content that needs to be removed or so on and so forth so you'll have to just select a reason and then click submit okay so uh, the other another reason could be that the image is outdated you know there's different there's different reasons why you might want to uh, block a web or block a web page so disavow links okay so <clears throat> this is probably one of the most important ones under this uh, menu is you know if we're getting links from spammy spy sites porn.com you know linking to our website we know that we don't want that kind of traffic generation even though we might be getting a lot of traffic if it's coming from a spammy site you know we don't we don't want that kind of thing we we want good quality sites linking to our content and that we want them to use the right keyword phrase as the anchor text so that's this is where we would disavow links okay 
geotargeting. Okay, so let's say that you know we had a website, you know, a1websitepro.com, but let's say that I have another let's say I had another division of my company in Great Britain or Spain or something like that. So I created a subdirectory and it's for those particular people across seas or maybe I'm separating it according to states, so on and so forth. I could geo target my URLs, okay? This this way. I would and then I would get a subdirectory like possibly Spain slash a a1 website pro, you know, so there's there's all different types of direct directories. One of the best ones that I could think of is Craigslist. You know, if you go into craigslist.org, if you just log on to that site, he has different countries. Then he'll, you know, if you pick the United States, he'll have different states, and then you pick the states, he'll have different cities. You know, that's kind of like the way the way he does things. So that's how he'll geo target his URLs. Okay. And you could do a domain, subdomain, a directory, or a page. So let's say that you have one page on your website that you want to dedicate to the people in Great Britain or Spain or Africa, or South America, you know, that you've written in their language, their dominant language there, you know, and you wanted to put that page there. You could do that, okay? So that's how you'll geo target URLs. Select your country. <clears throat> okay, now here over here is uh, verifying the ownership, and you guys already went through this. You take that that meta tag down there and uh, paste it in uh, your work, uh, your Yoast WordPress to verify that you are the owner of this URL. Now this is something that's really cool that I told you about. Bing has it's uh, kind of new right now, and but this is the connected pages for your social media that you're connecting to your Bing Webmaster Tools. Now the thing that I find very interesting about this is they're not asking this for nothing are they? There's a reason why they're asking for your Facebook page, your Twitter page, your LinkedIn page, your Google Plus page. I mean why the heck would Bing be asking for your Google Plus page, right? So this tells me that Bing is going to be checking your social uh, network platforms to to see where they're going to rank you in the search engines, right? They're going to see how important it is. So that's why I say connect all of your social media pages to your website. Connect your website to all your social media pages and now you have a way for Bing Webmaster Tools to connect those as well. Which is going to do what? Well, I I, th I believe this is going to up your rank in the Bing search engine, okay? And, and the more content you have on all those channels, you know, that that's related to your website content, you know, the better rank that you're going to have. Okay, <clears throat> users. Let's say that you said, uh, you know, you set up uh, Bing Webmaster Tools for a client. Okay, because they're like, hey, I just want you to set it up, but I want to see the results. Well, this is a way where you can um, share, you know, the Bing Webmaster tools with a client without sharing the whole account with them, right? So you could just click on the site that you want to share, click the users, and, you know, enter this information right here and what URL, and uh, that's how you would do it, you know, and then you'll, you could see, you could give them different roles, you know, and uh, that's you know that's how you could share it with your client or whatnot. Um, yeah, I would just correct business pages, David. You know the business pages. You know your Facebook fan page and 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 you know stuff like that. You know your LinkedIn page, of course, would probably be you know kind of personal, but business as well. And it'll be go ahead to you know just link them. If you don't have those pages set up, go ahead and set them up. You know they're usually pretty easy. And remember how I told you to keep track of your, uh, you know, your passwords, username and passwords in the uh, Google uh, database. That's where where this would really come in handy for everybody, so that they could keep their passwords. I, I think I did that in lesson two or three. I forget, but uh, that's the only way that I could find to keep all those pages separate. 
Okay, so <clears throat> the next one is page reports. You know, uh, we click on page reports. We're just going to get a snapshot of whatever's under this child menu here. Okay, and we can see the clicks from search, how many times it appeared in the search in the past 30 days, so on and so forth, right here in this graph. And as you tick these different things, those lines will show up on there. Okay. And right down here are you know more stats. You know this is kind of like uh, uh, you can see this is kind of just a glance of what's to come from below. Okay. So here we can see search keywords. Um, whoop, sorry about that. Search keywords, uh, SEO reports. You know. Uh, different suggestions that they're going to have within uh, the Bing Webmaster Tools platform. Okay, so if we go under reports data to page traffic here, uh, we can see you know how we're doing in the search engines. You know where we're improving, where we're not improving. You know where we could do better, so on and so forth. Uh, this is a great way uh, to analyze the site for Bing. Remember, this only has to do with Bing and Yahoo, not Google. And you'll get 20 times more search results from Google than you will with Bing. Okay, so let's say you wanted to see what keywords are the people using the find capsule USA.com or this URL. You know, size three empty gelatin capsules. If we wanted to see what keywords those are, we just click View over here, so we could see, you know, how you know how we're doing. I mean, if we see that we're appearing in the search in the past 30 days, 737 times for this web page, it would be kind of nice to see the keywords, you know. So we could go and improve that website. We could see that the uh, average search click position usually will be in the f number four on the first page, right? Uh, so that shows us capsuleusa.com. You see the average search click position is two, all right? And it says that we're down from last month. Here, uh, HTTPS, that's the secure. You notice how they have HTTP and then HTTPS, which is the secure socket layer that we were talking about before. And here they're usually in, the, in uh, position five, okay? So this, is, this provides a lot of data that you can use to optimize your website or your client's website and give good advice on that kind of thing, okay? All right, so if we go to the next one, this is the Index Explorer, okay? So basically, uh, this is gonna show you all the folders that you have on your website. Because remember, a, ser a website is nothing more than a bunch of folder and files, okay? So, and it'll tell us, it'll give us some information about our index, you know, .php, folder it, it contains 125 uh, folders and URLs that appeared in search 207 times there's two clicks from the search and the inbound link count is 58 okay uh, let me see something here <clears throat> alright so moving right along if we go to search keywords this is probably one of the most important things that you want to take into consideration whenever you're trying to optimize your website. We can see here from our keywords, we have that first one, empty gelatin capsules. It had, it's down from last month by three clicks, uh, it, but appeared in search, it's up 187 times. Uh, the click-through rate is 1.6, which is down from last month, of course. And then the average search click position, it's usually in the sixth position, and that's always the first page. Average search position is 7.2. You'll see this one is usually in 29, 7.4, position 38, 8.6, and so on and so forth. And we can see that we're moving up in the search engine rank position with the green arrows. With the red arrows, we're moving down in the search engine rank position compared to the previous month. Okay. And then over here, if we want to see the pages that are linked to this, we could click View. And if we see, you know, that we could do better on that, we want to go and improve those pages, okay? All right, <clears throat> so here's some SEO reports. And they're going to give us some SEO suggestions right here. Uh, maybe the image tag does not have an alt tag with it, or the title's too short or too long, or there, there are multiple H1 tags on the page, you know? 
Now we can see this is a uh, high severity. Um, the description is too long or too short. Okay. Now they're probably talking about the meta description. So, and it shows just the error count, how many and how many pages are affected. Okay. So right here, if we click on inbound links, these are links coming to our site. We can see how many inbound links that we have, and you get data on that right here. We can see we have you know approximately 125 inbound links for this particular site, and what pages are linked. Okay, so that's that's the kind of uh, thing. Usually, this a lot of times will be other websites down there, but we have uh, pages within the website that are you know people are clicking through and that's that's kind of a good sign as well because we want a good click through rate on our websites and then we see the count of links here's the crawl information so we're gonna have a lot of different types of crawl information this is nothing to get bent out of shape over okay so this uh, first one the 400 499 request errors that means that Google, Google uh, Bing bot came and they got an error at one time or another and and they're reporting to you that they have an error okay it's like mommy I hurt my finger <laughs> so I mean a lot of times these things uh, you know people get bent out of shape over this stuff sometimes but a lot of times there's just nothing even if you have a 500 internal server error as long as you could get to your website and see that that page loads don't worry about it now this is the 301 redirects which means those pages have been moved permanently there's nothing wrong with this this just lets you know that there's 42 pages that are redirected to new web pages and then the 302 uh, is is a temporary move let's say that you're you're working on the page and you just or you're working on a website and you want to temporarily redirect so that'd be a 302 redirect here's the robot text exclusion letting you know what uh, uh, you know this this means that if Google bot came to my website to crawl it, okay? But I'm blocking Google bot. If I'm blocking Google bot, that's gonna have, or, or if I'm blocking the Bing bot, I'm sorry, Bing. If I'm blocking the Bing bot, this is gonna have messages for me here. But of course, I let Bing crawl the website. I'm not, I'm not trying to block them. The DNS failures. This has to do with your name servers. Maybe you set a, uh, you know, maybe there's something wrong with your name servers. So it's going to give you some information here. And the connection timeouts is, uh, that's it. That they came, to Google or Bing bot came to your website and they tried to connect, but they they were not successful. So they're going to give you some uh, information here. Maybe they were waiting and waiting, waiting on your website, kind of like we were waiting on your website this morning to load and it didn't load. So imagine that being Bing bot there to try to load your website so you would get uh, some information here okay malware just like Google webmaster tools you know will provide you information on uh, malware so will Bing we're gonna be able to scan your site and see if there's any malware on it or any viruses or anything of that nature and uh, if there's not they'll say Bing did not find any harmful elements on your website Okay, so this is a good sign. Diagnostics and tools. Okay, so this is, uh, once again, if we click on that parent menu, it's just going to give us a glance of what's to come below for, you know, keyword research, link explorer, so on and so forth. So that's what the, that's what this does right here. So if we type in, a, if we wanted to research keyword phrase, we could do it from here. We could click this link right here, you know, click search, select our, uh, our metrics or variables that we want and then hit search okay this link explorer right here of course is uh, this child menu to right here if we want to explore link on our website we could do that uh, fetches Bing bot you know same tools we could find here uh, markup validator same tools we find here SEO analyzer uh, those are the same tools that we find there okay so if we click on keyword research let's say we typed in uh, website development okay and we want to see what's how being you know how good is this keyword in the Bing search engines okay so we're, we're, we're not not in Google uh, keyword planner we're in the Bing webmaster tools and we want to know how many times this particular term appears in the Bing search engine 
not the Google search engine, the Bing search engine. So we, so we type in there, and then we get the, our results down below. Of course, you know where we're. Uh, we could also select, you know, what countries that we want to include, the language, so on and so forth. Uh, if we want it to be strictly web development, or you know, we want it broad. Um, so right down here, we get our keywords and our, our keyword phrase, and then suggestions for our keyword phrase. And notice website development appeared 460, but web development appeared 18,548. So that might be a better. So what I try to do is I'll hover over these dollar signs, and if they're expensive bids, then I know that we're going to probably have a hard time getting indexed for this keyword phrase. If it's a lower bid, you know, but a higher search, uh, I'll probably have an easier time. Kind of, kind of the same rule of thumb that I follow with the uh, uh, Google Keyword Planner. Here we can see how many times it appeared in the search, and then on the end there, if there's a trend, trends are you know if it's increasing in interest or decreasing in interest, they'll have a little graph on the end there for us. Okay, so that's how you research the keywords uh, for Bing. If you know uh, you're interested in getting it indexed in the Bing search engine. Now the Link Explorer is you know located right here. You can submit a URL and discover uh, that page that linked to that URL. So if we hit Encapsule USA, hit Explore, we can see that there are, um, there's another website called Pump and Pose, and it's linking to Capsule USA. Okay, so that's how you could tell. You know, uh, if you want to know what websites are linking to a particular page, then that's how you do it. Okay. Fetch is Bing bought. We've already went over this in lesson three and earlier in this lesson, but uh, you know, as before, you just type in the complete URL, the complete permalink to that web page. You type in there and hit fetch, and you know, fetch is Bing bought, and you're good to go. Um, right down here, you know, these are different things. You know, you could refresh it. Let's say that you made, went and made changes to that page, and you want to refetch, refetch the URL. Uh, you could do that here. All right, the mock markup validator. So if we typed in A1 Website Pro and click validate, we're going to see some uh, data. You know, kind of like we were talking about with the data highlighter yesterday. You know, but Bing does it a little bit different. What they do is they just go down over your page, and you know, after we click that validate button, they're going to give us some data. You know, we got, uh, uh, you know, our AUG data. AUG is open graph. And Facebook uses this. There's a lot of other social network platforms that will use this open graph data, you know, to use in their share buttons and whatnot. Um, then we have the article. Uh, Google also uses this information. But we can see here that Bing also uses this information. You see that we have the time, the published time, the time it was modified. Uh, you know, an open graph image that's being, you know, uh, uh, cached is, you know, the, the image for that web page. So that's how we'll do, that's, that's how this markup validator works. SEO analyzer. So if we want to analyze a web page for SEO, we would just click the complete permalink in there and hit analyze, and then Bing will let us know what's going on with that web page, what we can do to improve it. Okay, Now, a lot of times we'll notice that there will be a, an IP address coming to our website over and over and over again. And what we want to do, uh, maybe we're getting kind of concerned because they're coming from the same city and state and they're, they're on our website for you know quite a length of time. And you, you're, you're thinking to yourself, could this be Bing bot? Well, what you do is you grab their IP address, and you could, uh, you know, get that from your data from your cPanel, and hit that IP address in there, and hit submit, and Bing will let you know if it's Bing bot coming to your website. So if they're coming to your website too often, you can adjust, uh, you know, how how often Bing comes to your site with that other tool that I was telling you about, or what times they come to your site. Okay, let's say that we moved a site. Okay, okay, we're moving this site to a, another destination URL. This is how you would do it in the Bing Webmaster Tools, right? 
um, you would hit you know you could even relocate a directory within your website you have the source and then you enter the destination URL and hit submit and this lets Bing know hey I moved my site okay so here's the different messages that you can uh, that you would receive from Bing and you notice that uh, there's there's uh, several different types of messages that Bing will send you. You know, you can still submit URLs this month for Able Website Pro, or we need a site map for pump and pose, um, uh, query parameters for normalization found at Capsule USA, and same thing with pump and pump pump and pose. And so so they'll give you different uh, messages. You know, uh, just to let you know what's going on with your website whenever it comes to the Bing search engine. Okay. Um, here's the Webmaster API. Like a lot of times, there'll be different apps you download to your phone. Maybe you want to check your Bing Webmaster tools. Sometimes you'll need an API key, and uh, so that's how you get the, your API key to enter in any apps that you want linked with your Bing Webmaster tools. Okay, so that's the Bing Webmaster tools, and so the algorithm, how to get indexed in Bing. That's that's what we're going to go over. It's a little bit different than Google. Remember that Google's algorithm is different than Bing's. Uh, use the Bing keyword tool to see what search, what is searched for in their search engine, and then of course you use the Google Webmaster tools to see what's uh, searched for in their search engine. Look at the suggested keyword phrases like we went over. Usually, if people cannot find it in Google, they'll go to Bing, and vice versa. You know, they'll go back. So Bing is a getting to be more and more of a contender, and they're implementing a lot of different strategies. Now they're linking the social pages within their search results, you know. So they're looking to do something pretty impressive. Now, you might have some possible in uh, issues for indexing, uh, you know, where you're like, man, I can't see my site. You know, can't, I'm not getting indexed, you know, and it might get frustrated. Well, if you have a new site, that, that's possibly, you know, one of the, the issues. Or the, the other issue is there's no links pointing to your site. So you want to make sure that you have those social network platforms pointed up, linking back to your site using those keyword phrases. Because Bing will not index a site unless it has any, unless it has backlink strat, uh, strategy implemented. Okay, so that's another reason. So if you have a new site, make sure you start working on that backlink. Send out email marketing, you know. Hey, check out my new article, you know, to your brothers, friends, family, whatnot, you know. Hey, check this out. So involve your people and involve your peeps. Your peeps are going to be your best uh, sources for, you know, helping your website grow and get indexed according to your keyword phrases. Send it to your mother, brother, sister, father, cousin, friends, you know, it doesn't matter. But you know, get, try to get your friends involved. Let them know this is what you do. Oh, another possible issue is maybe a robot text uh, is not set up right. It might be blocking Bing because, like I said, you can block Bing, and uh, you could see that in the in the metric that I was showing you where it was talking about the errors for pages. So you want to check those. Make sure your robot text is uh, set up properly and in the content management system where it already is. There could be a meta tag that says robots content no index. Alright, so that's that could be another reason why you're not being indexed. You could be blocking URLs inside of Bing Webmaster Tools like we talked about before with the things that I told you not to mess with like the different parameters and whatnot. The site may not meet quality policy, so if you have a spammy site or it even looks like a spammy site and it doesn't meet quality policies, then you know you could have an issue there. The website may be banned by Bing because of a penalty. Okay, so just like uh, Google has their policies, Bing has their policies too, and if you don't adhere, then they can take you off. Remember, Bing, Google, Yahoo, all these. All these uh, search engines are, are another website. They're just a website that indexes other websites, but they're very powerful to be indexed and you know can make you or break you. So in understanding Bing Analytics, we found out that we have to study, right? We have to study, we have to look at those metrics, view the keyword phrases that are backlinking to our website, you know, which ones are effective, which ones are getting us on the first page, you know. How we can can we improve on the other ones that are on page two and three, right? So study 
is what the is what it takes study and work so what to do you want to lower your bounce rate you know you don't want a high bounce rate you know if you're up in 80 90 percent bounce rate you want to try to get that down increase your click-through rate data or click-through rate so give them people something to click on when they come on your website you know just don't write an article and think that hey you know I wrote a beautiful article you need to sit here and read this all day long you know they're not going to sit there and read it all day long people like to click so you can give them anchor text to click on you can give them related article related content to click on so keep them on your website keep them interested Bing is interested in giving your users results that lead them to websites that are having an engaging experience. So you can go to YouTube, grab some videos. You know, a lot, if you make the video big enough, a lot of times people won't go to the YouTube. You can use any one of my videos. You know, on your websites, you can use uh, any YouTube video. You know, keep the people on there, give them something to look at, uh, engage them, give them something to watch. <clears throat> okay. Keep them there by any creative means necessary. Maybe you have a photo slider, you know, you know, with a lot of beautiful pictures on it or whatnot. So that's that is a lot of ways to keep people on your website. Just give them something interesting to keep them there. This will lower your bounce rate, increase your click through rate, rate, and so on. Create a good backlink strategy using your social networks and more. You know, the other thing that you could do is Craigslist offers free ads. Go in there you know uh, make a make a good article on Craigslist about uh, you know the web development strategy course and you know backlink to your website where they could uh, purchase the course but this is how you'll be indexed well in Bing if you if you go through this information and just make a great website that people could rely on for good quality content now we got have webdevelopmentstrategy.org. This website is a new website, and this is where we will definitely be putting the information up from this course. You know, to help people. You know, after they go through this course, you know, they're going to want additional information, and I'm going to be relying on you guys' articles to uh, be indexed on that website as well via an RSS feed, so that they could get you know good information about web development strategy and everybody's success stories that have been able to implement you know different strategies and you know because everybody does things that are a little bit different some are effective some not so effective we're going to share whatever has been effective with our people at webdevelopmentstrategy.org okay so this brings us to an assessment okay now I know that that uh, some of you guys are uh, haven't been able to complete, complete the assessments up thus far, but I'm going to give go through with this with you, and it's just based upon today. Okay, question number one: True or false? Bing Webmaster Tools helps us to submit our sites to the Bing search engine for indexing. True, very good. That is a true. Bing Webmaster Tools does help us to submit our websites. Okay. You can, true or false, you can add only one website to your Bing Webmaster Tools. Very good. False. Question three. Bing Webmaster Tools shows you how many clicks you receive from the Bing search engine. Very good. True. Question four. In the Bing Webmaster Tools dashboard, you can view the number of your web pages that are indexed by Bing. Very good. True. Question number five. Bing tells you your top keyword phrase for their search engine. Yeah. True. Very good. Question six. You submit your website sitemaps to Bing to help them crawl your website. Very good, true. Question seven, true or false. Bing Webmaster Tools does not allow you to submit individual page URLs for indexing if you revise one of your web pages. They do not allow. Is that true or false? False, very good, that's false. They do allow. Question eight, let's fill in the blank. 
By telling Bing to ignore URLs that you do not want to have crawl, you can prevent duplicate content in the Bing index, avoid having a page index value split between multiple URL variations, avoid unnecessary site bandwidth usage by a web crawler, or four, make sure that Bing crawls each and every variation of every web page. Well, it looks like I gave away the answer there. <laughs> so this would prevent duplicate content in the Bing index, okay? By telling them to ignore URLs that you do not want to have crawled. Okay, we didn't get into that, but let's say you go onto your blog page on your WordPress, okay? Now on your blog page is content that is linked to your articles. And uh, as you guys make more and more posts, you'll see what I mean. But if you're including the full content on your blog page, it'll be on your web page two times, won't it? It'll be on your blog page and then that individual post page. So sometimes by telling Bing to ignore URLs that you don't want to have crawled, you can prevent duplicate content in the Bing index, okay? So you guys aren't going to use this. We're going to use the summary uh, in our websites and so that we can avoid duplicate content that way. We could also avoid having a page index value split between multiple URL variations. So this is another thing that we could do by telling Bing to ignore URLs. We can also avoid unnecessary site bandwidth usage by the web, web crawler. This is wrong to make sure that Bing crawls each and every variation of every web, every page. That's just not that doesn't that doesn't have anything to do with this. Okay. Question number nine: You cannot control what time of day Bing will crawl your website. True or false? You cannot control what time of day Bing crawls your website. That answer, of course, is false, because we can tell what what time of day we can tell Bing what time of day to come and crawl our website. You know, if they, you know, if, if we want them to come in the morning because most of our traffic is on the evening, we can do that. Question ten: Deep linking is using a hyperlink links to a specific web page of content on a web page instead of the home page. Making sure you have at least 20 links out to outside content on each of your web pages. Buying lists of backlinks to ensure that you have a higher page rank of traffic to your site. So we have one, two, and three there. So the answer, of course, is one. Yes, that's right, Jacob. Uh, so using a hyperlink that's uh, linked to a specific web page. All right. So <clears throat> do you guys have any questions on the, on the course today?